Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Daniel Knows Title. I'm gonna to try to do this in one shot without doing much edits, so bear with me. I'll be looking down in my iPad notes below. Um, pretty much it's been 26, 27 days since the California shutdown. And you know, it seems like regulations, laws, mandates, and orders are being changed every single day by city, state, county, and throughout the United States. And it's really hard to keep up with all the changing information. Um, even for me, I have an overload of information from different organizations, associations, and even from our own title industry uh, with information that's just changing. And sometimes it changes like the next hour. And so how do we get all this information and consume it and and share it with our clientele in the way that we best can because we can't just say one thing and then all of a sudden something changes the next hour. That's really difficult for all of our clients and real estate professionals to keep up with all that information. And so what I did was an update for today and that's it. And I can't guarantee any of this information going forward. Uh, but as of right now, uh, the, these regulations and rules are in place. So I'm going to cover several topics um, and go over all that information. Uh, pretty much the coronavirus is affecting all businesses in some form or another. Um, it's not just restaurants and retail and, and those businesses, but it's everything else. The fashion industry, the, the hospital industry, nursing, everything. It's just everything in general is being affected and including the real estate industry. Uh, it's changing how business is being done, how meetings are taking place, uh, how homes are being shown and marketed. And, you know, we unfortunately there are clients and real estate professionals that are um, applying for SBA loans and unemployment and they're going through tough periods right now because this was their main source of income. And so if they're not able to do business as usual, this is affecting their financial situation. Um, there are real estate companies, major ones, that are laying off or furloughing their staff. Um, and a lot of the iBuyer systems and programs are on hold and investors are on hold. Um, that being said, um, the good news is this. Um, the real estate industry, lending, title, escrow, and other services that are related to our industry is considered an essential business. Construction is still continuing. Moving companies are still in business. And we're able to virtually and digitally show, market, sell and buy uh, properties. Um, this is in no way bragging or boasting that our industry are, is still working. Um, I say this with caution because I know that there are a lot of people that are affected by COVID-19 and they're currently unemployed or they're financially stressed. My heart uh, goes out to everyone out there. It breaks, it saddens me, and I know a lot of close people that are suffering financially, emotionally um, uh, because of all this. So I don't want to say any of this lightly. Please don't take it that way and I genuinely care for every single one of you. Um, you know, that being said, you know, we're still in this business and we're still considered an essential business because a lot of people still need help. You know, a lot of people need to sell and buy due to many different reasons, whether it be job relocation, um, family situations, financial situations, their leases expiring for their residential or commercial uh, property that they're in. And so because all these people still need help, uh, the government has considered the industry an essential. Um, and we hope that it stays as an essential while practicing safe distancing, um, sanitary um, practices, uh, gloves, masks, anything that you can do in order to provide a safe atmosphere to do business. That's probably the best way to go. Um, let's go on to the three different topics that I'll be going over in this video. Um, number one, it will be landlord and tenants. Uh, what are the circumstances and situations surrounding that? Uh, number two will be options for real estate agents, buyers and sellers in this current uh, COVID-19 situation. 
Uh, number three is the state of the lending industry. Um, residential and commercial, I'll cover both. And so let me go into the first topic. And this video will be more like a kind of a live webinar format. I'm, try I'm not gonna try to edit it too much. So forgive me if there is some redundancy or repetition in some of the information that I say. Uh, you can fast forward it or you know you can speed it up and so uh, let me go to the first topic landlords and tenants um, currently there is a freeze on evictions and lockouts and more specifically they cannot the landlords cannot pursue a lawsuit based on evictions because their courts are closed and it's also a mandate from the county of Los Angeles. I'm gonna cover California State and more specifically Los Angeles County because that's where I'm from. Because every city, state, county has different regulations that's changing all the time. And so I can't cover all of that. So I will just focus on LA County. And the Los Angeles sheriffs, they are ordered not to enforce lockouts. So if you're not paying your rent, if your landlord is threatening with eviction and they're trying to kick you out and lock you out from your unit, sheriffs cannot help with that. You're not allowed to do lockouts as a landlord. So as a tenant, you are protected in these situations. Should you continue to pay your rent if you can afford it, if you're financially able to pay your rent, you should do so because you're gonna to have to show some proof why you've been affected by COVID-19. Did you lose a job? You know, you're gonna to have to explain to your landlord if at a future date you're still not to able to pay your mortgage, um, your, your, your rent, um, you're gonna to have to eventually Prove that in court if it ends up in court, if court procedures are back open and, and landlords are able to file lawsuits against the tenants, then you're going to have to provide proof that you aren't able to pay the rent. If you still currently have a job, you still getting paid the same rate and your job is unaffected by COVID-19, uh, that's going to be a hard case to prove in court. And so th that is not to scare any tenants. That's not to... Um, you know, upset any landlords. This is just the information that's been provided. It could change at any date. And so that being said, the last um, information I have for landlords and tenants is that rent forgiveness is not available in the city of Los Angeles and Los Angeles County. Right now, there are certain groups that are fighting for rent forgiveness, but um, I highly doubt that will be passed. Um, will rent forgiveness or mortgage forgiveness be available for homeowners? Not sure. That's something that the lending industry has to address. And right now, uh, not a lot of those options are available. Let me go to the second topic. Uh, options for real estate agents, sellers, and buyers. Currently for real estate agents, you're not allowed to do any open houses. You're not allowed to do broker caravans, meaning uh, and this is for all the, um, the people out there that are not real estate agents. What a broker caravan is, is an open house for just real estate agents only. And so other real estate agents get to preview the property before it goes to the mass public and they're able to offer that information to all their buyers. Uh, and say, hey, there's a listing that's coming up or I previewed a listing that might fit your needs and we've only had access to it before it goes to the mass public and it's a beautiful home for you. So that was business before COVID-19. Now you can't even do that. Brokers are not allowed to go around doing caravans. Um, and for Los Angeles, there are no in-person showings and that restriction has been explained in many different ways and still the verbiage is a little bit confusing but you know the california association explained it this way um, if it's a vacant home then you can do an in-person showing so don't quote me on this but right now what they're saying is that you can show vacant homes but if it's owner occupied, you can only show it virtually. If there's someone living there, you can only show it virtually. Does that mean that 
that if the homeowner steps outside to go to the market, can I as a real estate agent bring my buyer to see the home because the home is technically vacant? And what we're being told is no. It has to be actually a vacant home. No homeowner physically living in the home. And so uh, we want to be very clear on that. And so um, what are some options for real estate agents? They're doing 3D virtual tours. They're doing docs online as usual. And mobile notaries are available for wet signatures. So um, the county requires the documents to be signed with a wet signature right now. And that's still uh, happening in the state of California. Some states are allowing Vert, you know, you to sign all the documents all, uh, online and do business at, in that way. But for California, we still need wet signatures. Uh, as real estate agents, there are still some um, things that we have to address to our sellers and buyers. And those are new California Association Realtor forms for coronavirus specifically. So this protects the sellers, the buyers, the real estate agents, the brokerages. It protects everyone that's involved in that transaction. So just be mindful of the new forms that you have to do. And buyers can still get a loan. But, um, you know, as I go into the next segment of my information, there are certain restrictions that they will have and so going to the third topic for the lending industry what has changed what's different um, today chase has announced that they are raising the standards for the borrowers so anyone that wants to get a loan for a home right now their minimum fico score right now has to be 700 and they must have a 20 percent down so that's different from before COVID-19, there's many different loan programs that you could have applied for where you didn't have to pay the 20% down. It could have been a 3% down, a 5% down, a 10% down. But Chase is kind of setting a standard. And I wouldn't be surprised if all the different lenders out there, major lenders, follow suit and you know raises a standard for all the borrowers out there. The reason why they're doing this is to really protect the borrower to get you in a home that you can actually afford. Um, and that is more important than ever right now. Um, your typical 15 to 30 day escrow that we saw, you know, a lot during in the past several years, that is much harder to do right now. Uh, the lenders are predicting more of a 40 to 45 day minimum escrow period because uh, they're facing a lot of different issues. They're facing staffing issues, working from home challenges. Um, they're also being, you know, ha having to handle a lot of the forbearance requests. A lot of mortgage uh, borrowers, homeowners are asking for forbearance on their mortgage. And so they're doing so many different things. They're, they're trying to uh, accommodate everyone as best as they can while facing all these different issues. A lot of lenders outsource their, their work to India and many different countries, but as those countries shut down those divisions and those departments, now we're having to you know, deal with doing all those loans in-house at all of our corporate offices throughout the state and throughout the nation. And if there is a huge staff reduction, there's gonna be a huge you know, delay in all of our applications. And so, um, you know, even our SBA lenders that I've talked to, they are swamped with applications from business owners, from individuals that are applying for loans to help them during this situation. Um, it is tough. Well, some of my SBA lenders are staying at their offices till two or three o'clock in the morning, and they're still trying to process all the different applications out there. And so, um, you know, my advice to all the borrowers and um, anyone that's applying for a new loan, whether it's for a residential property or just for your own finances, um, you have to be very patient with your lender uh, because the underwriters are instructed to be very careful in who they lend to. They can't just give out money to everyone, you know, um, as it seemed like before, you know, coronavirus. But 
now it's being more strict. Um, that being said, um, you know, the last part of all this is the commercial lenders and um, the, the commercial lenders, a lot of the lenders are on hold and a lot of the new commercial projects are on hold as well because they're not being able to get financing for those projects and the commercial lending industry right now they're going through numerous changes in how they're going to be able to lend to their investors um, what proof or requirement are they going to require what happens when all your tenants don't pay the lease are we still able as a commercial lender to lend to the investor even though this commercial property has no current income? So these are all the different challenges that are facing. New um, guidelines are being you know, made every single day. So we're going to have to watch that as, as it comes through. Uh, that's the end of this entire uh, video. You know, I appreciate you guys being patient with me, taking the time to watch this video. Um, if you enjoy this information, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe on my YouTube channel. I'm going to have a link in the, the comment sections or the sections below. Um, thank you so much for watching and just, you know, I just want to make a personal message to everyone out there that are, you know, really struggling during these times. Um, you know, you know, please be safe and, and please, you know, be patient with your real estate agent, your lender, your title, you know, me, uh, your escrow people. We are working around the clock to work so hard for everyone out there. And, you know, we are being bombarded with new regulations and laws and mandates and orders that are changed on a daily basis. Our industry is being challenged, uh, you know, significantly during this time. So, you know, uh, please, you know, give grace to everyone out there. Um, if there's any information that you need uh, from all of this, you know, make sure to hit me up, comment, uh, send me a DM, or, you know, send me an email at danieltitle at gmail.com. And I'll try to address everything in a timely manner. So that being said, you know, thank you so much for watching once again. Love you guys. I appreciate you. Till next time. Bye.